What's up, guys? Here we go. Bank bail-ins begin as EU Bank is bailed in in Austria. Bank bail-ins in the EU are here after Austria's financial markets regulator, FMA, imposed a hefty haircut on creditors in an Austrian bank. Creditors in the bank HETA asset resolution will receive less than half of their money back, according to the country's financial regulator, the FMA. Senior bondholders in the so-called bad bank could expect to receive around 46 euros for each euro which would be paid from the realization of assets by 2020, according to the FMA statement. It said that this had been calculating using very conservative assumptions. This package of measures also ensures the equal treatment of creditors. Orderly resolution is more advantageous than insolvency proceedings, the FMA said. Bond maturities, however, will be extended to 31 December 2023. All currently outstanding legal disputes will realistically only be concluded by the end of 2023. Only at that point will it be possible to finally distribute the assets and liquidate the company, the regulator said. 2023, they're going to have to wait to get a penny of their money. Representatives of Austrian province Carinthia and creditors of the failed regional lender are to meet in London tomorrow to try to break the impasse over a bond buyback scheme, an Austrian newspaper reported. Carinthia, a southern Austrian province, guaranteed the debt of local lender Hypo Alpe Adria before the bank collapsed and now faces the threat of insolvency if it had to honor the 10.8 billion euro, 12.3 billion dollar debt in full. Heta Asset Resolution was formed to wind down the bank but regulators froze Heta's debt repayments after discovering gaping capital holes at the bad bank. Heta's bail-ins pertain to bondholders, but it is important to note that recently introduced EU and international bail-in regulations mean that depositors in banks are now exposed to having their deposits bailed in. Bail-ins are one of the greatest financial risks to investors, savers, and indeed companies today. Yet they remain the most poorly covered financial risk and are largely ignored by financial advisors, brokers, and not surprisingly banks. There is a belief that bail-ins only relate to the rich and that the very wealthy depositors, as they will be imposed on those with deposits greater than national deposit guarantees. These deposit guarantees are generally the big round arbitrary numbers of say 100,000 euros, $250,000, and 75,000 whatever that is. These are not particularly large amounts and cannot and could amount to the entire life savings of a family or a pensioner or indeed it could be the entire capital of a small to medium sized business enterprise. There is belief that bail-ins only relate to the rich and for some reason it copied that twice. Okay, so here's some key considerations when choosing a bank and dealing with your money. Diversify savings across banks and in different countries. Consider your counterparty risk and the health of the deposit-taking bank. Attempt to own out assets outright and reduce risk to t custodians and trustees. Own physical gold and silver in allocated accounts with outright legal ownership or, as we know, 
in your hand or you don't really own it even if it's in an allocated account. Avoid investments where there's significant counterparty risk such as exchange traded funds and many structured products. Avoid banks with large derivative books and large mor mor mortgage books. Monitor banks and institutions stability. Monitor government policy pertaining to banks and bank deposits. And monitor deposit and savings accounts terms and conditions. Bail in key considerations. That's what those were. Media internationally has not analyzed this growing financial risk and the risk that it poses to deposits of savers, investors, and companies and indeed to our respective economies in a world that's already beset with huge deflationary pressures, bail-ins and confiscation deposits would be extremely deflationary and would likely contribute to severe recessions. This is something we warned of when we first conducted our extensive research on developing bail-in regimes. Diversification of deposit remains vital and one important way to protect against bail-ins is owning bullion. Imagine that. Taking delivery of gold and silver coins and bars or owning bullion in an allocated or segregated storage account is a, in the safest vaults in the world is a very prudent way to protect against bail-ins. So this article was all about us. But we don't want to do the allocated account thing. I guess if I was a really, really, really rich guy, I would want gold in, you know, Singapore and Switzerland and all these other places that have these uh, vaults that are basically break-in proof and are just vaults. They're not banks that own the vaults. They're just vaults that store precious metals. But, man, it I, I would have to have a lot of it in order to go that route. I'd rather just keep stacking it in my hand and grinning the whole way. Take care, guys.